Hi everyone, so in this video I'm doing the nail polish drawing challenge and I've seen um, some other artists on YouTube do this challenge and it looked like so much fun and like it would actually be a challenge because um, nail polish dries really fast and it becomes really tacky and hard to work with after um, uh, just like a couple seconds of, well maybe like a minute or so it starts to get really tacky and hard to work with. Um, but it does behave like paint for the most part. So for this, um, I took a sketch out of my sketchbook and I scanned it into Photoshop and made it larger, like 8 by 10 this uh, wood panel, that's the size of it. It's like a wood panel, but it has like a frame around it, so it's thicker. And I just got it from the dollar store. <laughs> it's nothing really fancy. And I primed it with white nail polish. And then to get my sketch onto it, I uh, colored on the back, like you just saw, I colored on the back of my sketch with uh, graphite and then you put that over top of the surface you want to transfer it to and then you just go, you tape it down so it doesn't move and then you just um, follow the lines of your sketch with uh, something with a sharp point like a pencil or a pen and when you take it off um, it's all transferred onto your wood panel. You can also use, um, what is it called, carbon paper, carbon copy paper, or something like that. Um, it's transfer paper, so you don't have to make it yourself, but it's really easy to make it yourself just by scribbling on it with like Conte, charcoal, graphite, anything that transfers really well. So my idea for this painting was a girl who's like in outer space. Um, I really am fascinated by outer space. I know many, um, a lot of people are for good reason. It's just so beautiful and there's so much mystery um, that goes along with it. So I wanted to do something galaxy kind of themed because I don't really draw galaxy things that often and they're really fun and you can basically do whatever you want and since this was, um, I knew that nail polish would, I wouldn't be able to get a very even coat of color so I wanted the background to be purposely um, very uh, messy looking and swirly and like you're inside like the Milky Way or something like that. Also, if you want to attempt this challenge, make sure that you have a fan going or a window open because it does, um, the fumes travel far and they're not good for you to breathe in for a long period of time. So I was wearing like a, like a piece of clothing over top of my mouth um, for a little bit, but um, I mostly did that for the background because so much wet nail polish was exposed. Um, there is a lot more fumes there than on the actual girl. So make sure you have like a fan going and a window open. That's what I did and just really let the room air out and don't um, work on it for too long because I don't imagine these are good for you to breathe in. So for the background, I did like navy blue nail polish and some purples and some other shades of blue and white. And then after I had all them laid down, I poured a little bit of nail polish remover into a little cup and I would just dip a brush in it and I swirled around the colors with it because um, nail polish remover um, picks up nail polish and thins it down, I guess and it kind of created like a like a smooth milky looking kind of texture and i also coated the whole thing in clear in a clear coat and that also helped me blend it because when you put nail polish on top of nail polish it reactivates the nail polish below it and then it's like one thick layer of nail polish that you can move around so that's kind of use that to my advantage and i and when it was wet i took a pencil and made white dots along the corners to kind of look like stars but they kind of ended up getting covered up anyway in the end, so. And the thing I struggled with most with this drawing was her skin. I wasn't sure how pale I wanted it to be. Um, I definitely wanted it to be pale just to kind of stand out from the dark background. But um, using all these tones, it just started to look, she looked like she had a sunburn and it was just looking too saturated for my overall look I wanted to go for. So I ended up painting the whole thing white and then I added a little bit of pink here and there, but overall her skin is like pure white colored. And then I just used some uh, pink to go in and add her facial features in the end. And I'm aware um, eventually 
she starts her dress kind of looks like Elsa's dress from Frozen. That was not intentional, but I do see some similarities between her and Elsa, but it's not supposed to look like Elsa, so. And I also wanted to, I couldn't decide if I wanted to outline everything or not. There's a lot of trial and error when I was coloring her dress because I couldn't decide what I wanted the top of it to look like because I kind of wanted it to be lighter at the top and then fade into the blue. But what I ended up doing was um, coloring the top part of it light blue, but then I ended up not liking that, so I, sc I scratch it off later. But um, yeah, there's just so much you can do with nail polish. If you don't like an area, you can color over it with like a clear coat and then let it sit for a few minutes and then you can scrape the whole layer off all the way to the um, beginning of the wood, like before any nail polish was on it, you can scrape it and it removes all the layers on that area which is good, I guess, in a way, but also bad if you accidentally smear it. So yeah, this this pink dress was definitely not working, so I end up scraping it off. <laughs> and I kind of, at this point, my hands, eventually, they start getting just covered in nail polish. And it's so hard to get off your skin. Like, you have to use a nail polish remover to get it off or soak them in water and, like, scrub them off. But I end up using a bit of nail polish remover to get it off my skin. And that can really dry out your hands, so I forgot to put, um hand lotion on after this but I think it's okay and I made her hair sparkly I was going to make it pink um, but I decided I wanted it to be more of a silvery neutral color well, it's not really neutral but it's like doesn't have a color because it's silver and I also use my nails a lot to help scrape off um, the nail polish and this just ended up being really really difficult to get off the bot the bottoms of my nails underneath my nails I still have some nail polish underneath my nails because um, it's just really hard to reach that area with a q-tip. So yeah, at this point I'm painting her whole skin white because I kind of want a clean slate. I want to start over with her skin and I almost forgot to add in the little planet silvery tattoo type stuff she has on her arms. That was a really big part of this drawing that I wanted to include and I almost forgot but I did it at the end. Um, and I know her arms look kind of weird. They look a little bit too big in her hands. They, they look too long too thick and her hands look too big and I really really wish I could change it but I can't because it was too late at this point. Like I, I knew they were kind of big but I thought it was okay but once I started painting it I realized no this looks really weird but I don't think it's that bad but it's definitely not right and I wish I could change it but I can't so but I like everything else about the drawing just her arms bother me so much. And it was really hard to get thin outlines. Um, I don't think I had the proper brush. I just used um, normal paint brushes to, to do most of this um, because a nail polish brush is really flat and large and it's hard to get thin lines. So I used a paintbrush and I mixed some colors together to do that. And sometimes I would thin out the colors with nail polish remover to make them easier to, um, they would go longer. It goes a longer way when they're thinner because thick nail polish doesn't really spread. That's the thing about nail polish, when you put it onto your surface, you, it doesn't really spread, it tends to stick in one area, and then you're trying to spread it out to, to like, fill in the area that you wanted to, but then it starts drying and then you can't get it to spread out more, so, so you have to keep adding more and more nail polish and it just gets so thick, it's really frustrating. <laughs> but it, it was kind of fun to use, and there's a, definitely a learning curve with um, this kind of material. I, I don't know if I would say this is an efficient way to make art but it's good for a challenge and it's a really cool effect at the end because it's so textured and shiny and it just it feels like like a piece of art if you know what I mean because it's just unlike any other medium I've ever used before but yeah I did enjoy this a lot it was fun and frustrating it was a good challenge and I think it turned out a lot better than I was expecting I also used some glitter uh, I just brushed it onto a sponge and then you just dab the sponge onto the onto the surface to put the glitter down that's the best way so i hope you enjoyed seeing the process for this video i had a lot of fun with the nail polish it was definitely i would definitely recommend this just try not to breathe in too much of the fumes leave a window open that's the best way to do it and i think it turned out okay so thanks for watching and i'll see you in my next video